All right, guys, we're going to go over a little part two here. Just some more tips and tricks on this uh, Dynam A10 from Nitro Planes. Um, like I said, been reading too many unsuccessful flights and uh, just people kind of not knowing what they're doing. <clears throat> um, kind of where I left off, I'm going to pick up on was just about epoxying. One of the most basic fundamentals of epoxying. Um, what I'm going to do here is just show you. These are going to be the landing gear for the wings. Now, I've already done the landing gear on the front. And trust me, I can grip that thing and almost bend it all the way back and it will not even budge from the fuselage. Now, my little, what I do on the landing gear here, as you can see, they look kind of gray. Well, that's because of the plastic. Once again, guys, same thing applies here, okay? You have to rough up the edges here and all edges, okay? Spin this around here. Everywhere. Everywhere that glue is going to contact, rough it up. Now, I know this looks dirty, but this is not dirty. This has actually been cleaned with alcohol. This is the roughed up surface, okay? Now, just a little tip, okay? When you mount, now before you do this, also remember, remove the paint from the area that you're going to be mounting the gear, okay? Um, remove it however you want, with scotch tape, with... Uh, you know, sandpaper, however you want. Just get that paint out of there. That's, that's bad stuff to have around a glued surface. So, a little tip to make these landing gears stronger, okay? First of all, roughing it all up, scuffing it up. That's going to give you a much tighter bond with your epoxy and a lot less chance of, uh, of ripping these gear off on a hard landing or catching it, you know, like I said, on a rut or something like that. And trust me, I've learned all this from experience. Um, first thing you're going to want to do before we even get into the mounting is the wheels came with a little rubber grommet on the end to hold it on. Okay, those grommets will not hold these gear on. What you need to do, go to your local hobby shop, get online and anything. They're like 99 cents for a pack of four of them. These are just little colics, little steel colics that have a little pinion screw in them. You fit your wheel in there, okay? And then push it back as far as you can to where you still get a good free movement but you have no no way for this wheel to move side to side okay nice tight fit and then you're going to want to put a little bit of Loctite on that thread that in there and you'll have a good wheel set up you won't ever have to worry about your wheel falling off there remember guys Loctite everything on these ARF kits any kit that you're not building from scratch, and even if you are building it from scratch, anything that is threaded, screwed, anything, always lock tight it. Okay, you can always get it back off, and lock tight can make the difference of bringing a plane home or bringing pieces home. So, just just remember to use the lock tight, guys. That's one of the most valuable things you can do. Now, a tip on this landing gear, besides obviously the scuffing up, when you go to mount this landing gear, um, be a uh, oh be a little don't be sparing I guess I could say with the epoxy use a good amount of epoxy okay this is already a heavy plane but with the uh, with the engines that you're running the motors that you're running and like I said with the right power setup you're not gonna have any problems uh, with adding a little bit of weight you know some of my other EDFs yeah I've got to watch every gram I put into it this one I'm not too worried about okay so on this one what we're gonna do is not only epoxy all surfaces around that are going to contact the uh, bottom of the wing but also you'll notice that there's a crevice in here you're going to want to fill that crevice with epoxy all the way to the top now this doesn't serve much of a purpose as far as securing it but if you do fill it to the top it will flow over just a little bit and it will create a bond here where normally you would just be gluing here and around the whole edge and up in the uh, the foam on the um, wing so you really want to uh, fill this up right in here it'll give it strength overall and it'll just give it a better hold and a better bond now a little bitty uh, little tip here okay guys if you look right in here okay this is where underneath here is where the wire goes into an L shape more of a Z shape I guess I should, I should say to come back down over and down okay so that is where the landing gear comes in now if you notice, toothpick, um, I have boxes of toothpick, I leave the pointed edge on, I put the 
the flat part that I've cut into just enough sticking up. Just, oh, I would probably say two millimeters, maybe, at the most. Okay? After you epoxy all this, epoxy that toothpick, place your gear up in there, and push that toothpick into the bottom of the wing. There's plenty of room to get two millimeters worth of of sticking in there. That'll just give you even more support, even more grip, and will allow it to, to flex a lot better. Will allow the wire to flex without this flexing. So that's another big thing on the landing gear. Um, if you guys are still having trouble with the landing gear, there's a lot of other little tricks I can show you. Like I said, I fly on a rough field. I have been through the landing gear problems, and I've come up with lots of solutions for them. Um, yeah, these aren't the best landing gear in the world, guys. That's not what I'm saying. These are, you know, wire landing gears yeah you're, you're probably going to bend the front one on a hard landing but the back ones on the wing should hold up pretty good if they don't there's stuff you can do to make it hold up good okay guys so we've covered that covered the landing gear we've covered the batteries we've covered cleaning the surfaces before you glue now another important thing on this a10 that a lot of people look over first with any edf especially with any with any foam plane okay you really, really need to go take a seat on the couch, watch some TV for a minute, and let me see if I can get this set here. And you really need to just sit there and bend your circuit forth, back and forth. And do this for a little bit, guys, okay? Get all of these areas nice and loose so that when you do use your control surface, even though this is only one push rod controlling the whole surface, you'll get equal movement on both sides if it's if it's loose enough okay so that is a definite must always work your work your uh, your ailerons your uh, elevator your rudder er everything just go ahead and work it in um, if you get on there go ahead and do it okay and the last part on this I'm gonna cover on the elevator is on the A10 you want to go ahead and throw in a carbon spar on the bottom of the uh, of the horizontal of the elevator okay I chose to put mine right just forward of the last mounting screw there where it's going to go in. Now this is on the bottom. I want the tops to look nice and clean so I put it on the bottom here. I just recently put this in just about 45 minutes ago so it's still kind of setting up. I used five minutes so I mean it's set up but this this elevator is now strong. Before I could flex it no problem. Now this thing is rigid and strong. That is a big thing with this A10. That's one of the major little problems with it is the flex in the elevator. So simply putting in a spar and uh, you can use round car uh, carbon fiber or you can use a square. I use a square just because a square is stronger. Square spars are stronger at, uh, you know, length to length they're stronger than the round. So I use square plus it's a lot easier to cut in and fit. Um, if you have any questions on how to do these properly to get them flush perfect and not remove any paint while you're putting in that spar, um, leave me a comment and I'll be more than happy to pop a video, explain it to you, pop a video, whatever you guys need, and uh, we'll get that taken care of, showing you how to put those in without damaging anything. Um, Alright, let me look at my little notes here before I run out of time again. Um, once again, Loctite, everything, all screws, all areas. Um, now on the CG, the CG is a trick because some people use it some way and then some and then someone will use it the exact same way and have a problem. You gotta remember guys, we all use different lipos in our planes, okay? Somebody could have another three thousand milliamp pack that weighs a lot less or a lot more. Okay, so obviously the CG is gonna be a little bit different. Okay, I mentioned the third rip. There's also a lot of people that say to keep the back of your battery about half an inch to three three quarters of an inch forward of the main wing okay so you are gonna have to play with the the uh, CG a little bit now I'm about to run out of time again so we'll come back with a part three and uh, I'm gonna cover a couple other important things that are actually a little bit wrong with the kit and we'll cover that and be right back